This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, will quantum computers destroy Bitcoin? I've been getting lots of questions about Microsoft's new quantum chip that was just announced a couple days ago. They announced that this new architecture, topological architecture used to develop the Maharana or Majorana 1 processor offers a clear path to fit a million qubits on a single chip that can fit in the palm of one's hand. Now, qubit, that's just short for quantum bit. That's the basic unit of quantum information, like, for example, bits in traditional non-quantum computing. And if you didn't know already, bit stands for binary digits. That's just a shortened version of it. So how many qubits can Microsoft currently fit on their chip? They can scale it up to a million qubits, they say. Currently, they can only fit eight topological qubits. So they're very far away from a million. How is quantum computing a possible threat to Bitcoin? A quantum computer can use Shor's algorithm or other factoring algorithms to reverse engineer a Bitcoin private key from a Bitcoin public key. And once you have that private key, you can move the Bitcoin that's in that address to an address that only you control. In other words, you can steal the coins. If you want to read more about Shor's algorithm, I'll put a link to this in the description notes below. We're talking here about quantum computers breaking public-private key cryptography. ECDSA, which was the traditional one used in Bitcoin, as well as Schnorr signatures, with came, which came with the Taproot upgrade, not SHA-256. You see this mentioned a lot, but what we're talking about here is public-private key cryptography being broken by a quantum computer, not SHA-256, which is the hashing function used in Bitcoin mining and elsewhere. And as far as I'm aware, quantum computing probably cannot be used to reverse engineer some data from its hash. So it cannot be used to reverse engineer a hash algorithm. Maybe it can speed up SHA-256 hashing a bit, but even that's unclear. If you want to understand how hashing works, basically you have an input and then you have an output after the information is sort of scrambled and reassembled in different ways. And the nice thing is the output is only is is always 256 bits. And the output output will always be different if you change something even slightly. So for example, the input here, XRP is for complete losers. We can see the SHA-256 hash generated by that ends in 7B5C. And now if we remove the S, if we just change one character, it now ends in 3B91. It's a completely different hash. So what we're talking about here when we're talking about reverse engineering a hash function is if someone gives you this output, you're able to work backwards and get the input. This is currently impossible. And most people believe that quantum computing will not be able to attack this, but it will be able to attack and deconstruct public private key cryptography. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. And share this video with a friend or family member. So what is the solution to the quantum computing threat for Bitcoin? Here's the solution. At some point, the community will need to update Bitcoin software to include a new Bitcoin address type that is quantum resistant. Here's one proposal proposed by at crypto quick and you can see the BIP right here. It's BIP 360 paid a quantum resistant hash. So this is a new type of Bitcoin address and this would need to be a change incorporated in the Bitcoin software. So there would need to be community consensus in order for this to happen or maybe we'll use a different BIP. And then what will happen once we have these quantum resistant Bitcoin addresses everyone will need to move their coins to one of those new addresses, or at least especially people with older Bitcoin address types will need to do this or risk having their coins stolen, swept by a quantum computer. And if Satoshi is no longer alive or chooses not to move his coins, if he is alive, his, her, their, their coins will be among the first to be stolen since these early addresses, since these coins use an early address type where the public key is clearly visible on chain. It hasn't been hashed. This is what's called P2PK pay to public key uh, Bitcoin addresses. And currently there are about 1.7 million coins uh, in this address type, including about a million of those coins are Satoshi's coins. As River points out here, a full migration of P2PK addresses, about 2 million Bitcoin addresses to safer new address types would require about 46,000 transactions or only about six Bitcoin blocks. Of course, the number of transactions to needed to migrate reused addresses is undoubtedly larger. We're going to talk about that in a second. So what can you do? When you spend from a Bitcoin address, be sure to spend the entire amount and don't leave any money. Don't leave any sats there. 
In other words, if you're sending Bitcoin to yourself, for example, make sure that your sats go to a fresh, never before used Bitcoin address, and any change goes to a fresh address as well. And most modern wallets will do this automatically for you. So it's not something you really need to worry about, but you just want to never reuse a Bitcoin address. And if you ever spend from a Bitcoin address, the public key is revealed on chain, but not until you spend. So this is why quantum, this is why Bitcoin addresses that have been spent from are more uh, open and vulnerable to a quantum attack because that public key has been revealed on chain for the first time, especially in later address types. In these early address types, that public key is already visible on chain. And once the public key to a Bitcoin address is revealed on chain, then any powerful quantum computer can take this public key and reverse engineer it to drive the private key that can then be used to sign a transaction to move the coins. So for that reason, as I mentioned many times in this channel, and also for privacy reasons, never ever reuse a Bitcoin address. It's just poor practices. Now, how long, how far away are we from having a quantum computer that can do this kind of attack? River points out here, a quantum computer would need 13 to 300 million qubits to execute a long range attack. Those are the kind we're talking about where you reverse engineer a public key from a private key and it would take one to eight hours. The best quantum computers today have only a thousand qubits. So you need to get that up to 13 million to 300 million. And as River points out here, even if we're optimistic about the rate of advancement, it's highly unlikely that quantum computers achieve this within the next decade. And then we can ask Giacomo Zucco, who I believe has a background in physics, he is even more skeptical about even be able to get to a single qubit, as he points out in this tweet. A single logical qubit with low enough error rate will not be built in a day, but maybe in decades if ever. From there, it will only be a matter of keeping a few thousands of them in coherence. So it's not just how many qubits you have, it's the error rates, it's the coherence, whatever that means, I can't even tell you. Theoretically feasible, as Giacomo says here, theoretically feasible, just like a warp engine speed, space travel, Mars terraforming, and killer nano robots. And then Asanzo.eth uh, responds, what do you mean? We already have Google Wello as per the single logical qubit. And Giacomo responds, not at all. Disregarding the pre and post selection debate and measuring it, Wello can at most claim an error rate of 10 to the minus three, short lived by the way. To even imagine to break crypto with Shor's algorithm, you need at least to go below 10 to the minus 10th, et cetera. So it, there's a lot of debate in the community about how close we are, but this is definitely not something we have to worry about this year or next year. And it's important to recognize too, people always use quantum computing as a way of fudding and attacking Bitcoin. But this is not just a problem for Bitcoin. It's also a problem for the whole world. It's a problem for the internet, which uses a lot of private public key cryptography. It's a problem for banks. It's a problem for government databases, including the nuclear, uh, nuclear stuff. It's a problem for military communications. It's a huge problem. All of these systems use public private key cryptography and are thus vulnerable as well. Now, Bitcoin is currently approximately a $2 trillion asset. So this is something that Bitcoiners are going to be on top of. They're going to be on top of the quantum computing problem. Since our lives and our savings depend so heavily on Bitcoin remaining the best and most secure money in the world. So I'm not worried at all. You're welcome to trust JP Morgan or Bank of America with your money instead, with their clunky old architecture and underpaid systems engineers and security teams. But for me, I'm just going to stick to Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.